Three, 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 down! Yeah! On this week's Throwdown, we have ju 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 Juicy Jordan. They mow the workout. We've got ring muscle ups, wall balls, and double unders. We release these workouts right here on YouTube every Thursday, like clockwork, at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but sometimes. We're... Sometimes not like clockwork. <laughs> <laughs> Almost always like clockwork. <laughs> I'd say 99% of the time. That's two clock clock is right twice a day. Yeah, yeah, we've only had one late episode. Get better at the sport of CrossFit alongside some of the best athletes in the world in our online training program, The Design. Head over to our website, trainingthinktank.com backslash DSGN to learn more. Welcome to episode 99 of The Throwdown. We got a special treat for you next week with episode 100, but I'm not gonna tell you what that is because it's about this week. What's episode 99? <laughs> <laughs> this week's throwdown is two rounds for time of 15 ring muscle ups, 60 wall balls, and 120 double unders. To get on the leaderboard, check the link in the description down below. There you'll find a warm up, movement standards, and a scaled version of this workout. Stay tuned until the end of this episode. I'm going to cover elites, RX, intermediate, and try to break down how you can get better at this workout. Remember, if you do this workout to use, why can't oh, we, I couldn't tag. get my foot high enough. Why can't we point that way? <laughs> Max's <laughs> big paw hits me in the head every single time. <laughs> paw. And we'll repost you on our social media. This week's demo athlete is Jordan Burnett. You've seen him before and you'll see him again. That was creepy. <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> Let's go see his strategy. Strategy. I've done one of these before. Very similar workout in the open. I think it was rowing, wall balls, and ring muscle ups. Um, I know that the ring muscle ups have a little bit of interference with the wall ball front rack, like my pecs in front of my delts tend to get jacked up on the wall balls. So I'm probably gonna go out more conservative on the ring muscle ups than I'd like to. Maybe two or three sets on the wall balls with quick breaks, and then I'll try and do the double unders just unbroken. Who wants the station that plays all the hits? 1047 The Fish. Obviously. Three, two, one, zero. <laughs> He was ready. Yeah, he knew. He knew it. Jordan, he's my favorite demo athlete. What? He always says yes when I ask. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I am. That means I'm your least favorite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> You're at the bottom of the list. I stopped next. asking you. <laughs> so I wonder what a conservative pace means on the ring muscle. Well, he he's, said two to three sets, right? Uh, on the I wall thought balls. that meant oh, wall balls. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He's really good at ring muscle. Yeah, ups. he is. I think two sets makes sense, but 15 for him would be, yeah, I mean, he can definitely do that. I mean, he's really moving on these. So that was wasn't that 15, 10? though. No. 10 reps, rest a little bit, five. Did you count 10? No, I'm just guessing based on the time. It was 34 seconds. Yeah, that was I'll a count short this. rest yeah. break. Good job, Jordan. One. What is this song? Two. While, while Max counts, <laughs> I mean, it, it really is one of those things where if you do too many muscle ups and you have to take a long break, it's not worth it. Just break them into smaller sets. So obviously he kept it pretty short. That was a good so job. Yeah. So four. he did 11 four with a really quick break and was done in a minute. I would say that only, uh, you know, semifinal individual level males should probably open with an unbroken set yeah. of muscle ups. I don't think it really yeah. is going to be the separator. I think that second set of muscle ups is probably where a lot more separation is going to be big for time. everyone because you're just tired. <laughs> yeah, big time, definitely. And the other thing too with these wall balls, I know so the temptation, it's 60. Some people are like, I'm good at wall balls, I'm going to go unbroken. But also, you have to think, how does that play into my second round of muscle ups? So yeah. if it's going to blow you up where you have to take a, you know, a bunch of long breaks in the muscle ups, break the wall balls, you, you really don't lose any time by dropping it, taking a deep breath and picking it yeah, back not up. Not at all. This has been an open combo before. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it is, well, maybe not deceptive, but there is a lot of shoulder stress from yes. doing, throwing the ball overhead and then doing double unders and then trying to go back to ring muscle ups. People's muscle ups deteriorate a lot. Yeah. So just be prepared for that. Yeah, it, that was a partition anyway workout where you just had to accumulate the reps and that, that was wall ball. Wall row. ball. There row. was also there was a there's been multiple yeah. wall ball yeah. double under muscle. I was workout. saying the most yeah. recent one oh, was yeah, the partition sorry. anyway, and the, some of the best scores that I saw were actually breaking these down to where it was like two muscle ups each round, and then what, whatever the wall balls were, I think maybe ten, and then so many cows row, uh, and people were getting elite scores doing that. So you don't have to do big sets. Is the point? Yeah. So Jordan, when he broke, I didn't count exactly how many wall balls. I think maybe he did like 20. His break was about 10 seconds. 
that's something that you can try, you know, practice doing even a set of 10 and just letting the ball hit the ground and picking it back up, going into a clean and going back up and keeping it to like two or three seconds. Sometimes you get through 60 reps quicker with much smaller sets like that than doing bigger sets with bigger breaks. Yeah. I know that because I like to do big breaks. Well, we've seen that now at this, <laughs> in the semifinals too. In, in both uh, Mid Atlantic and Granite Games, they had heavy wall balls, and some of the guys went unbroken, but they had to take long breaks before they did it, and they actually lost time to those that, like, I saw a couple guys do like 11, 11, 11 at Granite Games and ended up beating the guys that went unbroken because they kept those breaks short. Yep. All right, so three sets there. I don't know the exact rep count that he did, but three sets. And now on to the double unders. Which he is very good at. Yeah, Jordan is very, very good at double unders. I know that because I've competed against him in the <laughs> open and talked yeah. shit and lost many times. Yeah. <laughs> in his strategy, he said he, well, he oh. broke, but he said he would just try to go unbroken. I think for most people, that's not smart. For Jordan, it's probably fine. Yeah, I think it's like, you know, it's a plan to go unbroken. If you are going to do that, you probably should be able to do like 300 unbroken double unders or 200 unbroken double unders because he's pretty good at them. I think the combo of doing muscle ups and wall balls, it just blows your shoulders up. It's kind of similar to the wall walk double under workout that yep. a lot of people that were pretty efficient at double unders couldn't maintain their double under proficiency while they were going, so. Yeah, it's like the cadence almost leaves you or the technical aspects of like timing the jump just for some reason doesn't work. So you, yeah. you gotta come up with some contingency plans. Obviously he's doing a good job of, okay, I'm gonna take a deep breath and go, but this is a, a good test for that. Yeah, he must be pretty gassed here. <clears throat> A little look over at the clock. Or yeah. just, just an off day. They happen sometimes. <laughs> yeah. no, they, these are my normal double unders. <laughs> that would be me crushing them, doing sets of 10. I'm like, oh yeah. Something I do see athletes do in double under workouts when they have a plan and it, they, it doesn't happen is they kind of implode and they'll start taking long rest breaks even if they just did like five double unders and tripped. So that's something to just be aware of and try to keep yourself disciplined. Um, it's not gonna help you to just get angry if you're tripping. That's not gonna make you trip less, <laughs> so. Yeah. I actually think I remember that he, I was talking to Mike about this workout, that he said this wasn't a super well-executed workout for him. I'm guessing maybe this is the part of it that he was frustrated with watching this, especially knowing that his strategy was to go unbroken. I think we've so far seen five misses on the dub sets. And they don't look necessarily, some of them look like breaks, but some of them look like he's actually missing hitting his feet, so. I think I saw maybe one actual break and the rest were trips. Yeah. I know he's dealing with some knee issues here too, so maybe that played into it. Okay. But All right, either well, way. Round one done, 5.35 on that clock behind here. I think one of the things that you can do a good job of is getting back to the rings quickly, and even if it's a small set, kind of cutting down on some of these transition times. That was pretty good by Jordan, but I think that if you're trying to have a competitive score, you want to get over there quickly and at least do, you know, a set of three to five, then take a longer break, chip away at the rest of them. Yeah, I think a lot of it depends on how big you're going. His muscle up set right here is pretty big. I think he yeah. just opened with six. I'm guessing most people, when they get into that next round of muscle ups, are going to be breaking it into three or less. So if you know you're going to do that, it might make sense to just transition really quick, jump up, do a set of anywhere from one to three, chalk up after that and just start to, you know, put your rest time in between there instead of trying to take a long break, get up there, do a big set for you and still only get three. Right? I know for me, when I'm fatigued, if I can rest an extra 10 or 15 seconds to do like a set of four or five, I would have to rest the same amount to do like two or three. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? So it's almost like it's kind of worth the extra rest for that movement because my rest breaks just can't be that fast. That's probably different for you know high gymnasts or uh, higher level male athletes or. Yeah. Somebody told girls. me that I have to call you an elite now that you've made the games as a team. We don't in have the to comments, do that. but I disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever that was, I disagree. <laughs> you must win the games. <laughs> That's, That's the, the only, only way you, you can be elite. <laughs> or you got to get there twice. <laughs> Once is a flu. Because we both are one-time games Good teams man. athletes. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. What year did you go? Uh, 2001. 1971. Yeah. <laughs> that was right after Mike made it as an individual. <laughs> So I'm guessing one more set, or no, that was that was it. That was okay, so that transition yeah. there was a little bit on the slower end. 
So you can call that basically two minutes for 15 muscle ups there, whereas his first round was one minute. So you can see everyone's gonna have a little bit of deterioration, but obviously you wanna minimize that if you can. And he did three sets versus two sets, right? Yeah. Or four sets versus two sets. Right. I got distracted talking smack to Mia. <laughs> What's new? This is a set of wall balls that I would tell people to go for it a little bit more. So like the first round, I would tell most athletes, even if you're good at wall balls, break them up into three or four sets. This one, I would try to be a little bit more aggressive knowing that you can chip away the double unders as needed. Yeah, so he looks, I mean, I don't know what the actual limitation is. It would be interesting to have him do like a post-workout interview, but it's too late now. Um, to know if it was his shoulders blowing up that was making the wall balls and dubs difficult or if it was just like overall fatigue. I would guess shoulders. Jordan's a shorter athlete, so I know wall balls are hard challenging for him like he has to put a little bit more umph into yeah. it and this is shoulder dominant right like the yeah. muscle ups that for me especially double unders blow my shoulders up and then pressing the wall ball so that definitely is a limitation yeah this is again this is a nasty combo that's been exposed i think there have been two or maybe three open workouts that are these same exact movements mm -hmm. and it's it was big double under sets big wall ball sets They're and hard. big muscle up sets so it gets really combo. really challenging so right. it's a good thing to train yeah, you know, wall balls and double unders are the two things that have been in almost every single open. Double unders have been, so it's th these are the movements that are like so simple and everybody kind of takes advantage of them in their training or doesn't really think about them, but these are things that we should be doing and, and be good at if you want to do well in the open. So these rest breaks are getting long, and I'm not saying, like, obviously a long rest break for an athlete that's still pretty good overall at CrossFit and competitive CrossFit is probably still shorter than you know an intermediate athlete, but it's something to take into consideration that as you're doing this, you'd be better off you know, breaking these into fives with a quick break and going through 12 sets to get to 60. I think you'd get through the 60 wall balls way faster than you know trying to chip away, get yourself overextended, and then taking 20 or 30 second breaks because you're blown up. Yeah. I agree with that, and I know that's hard for most people because you want to do those bigger sets, or even if you do a set of five, you still feel blown up, but practicing that in your training, quick set to five, quick set to 10, even though that you're basically, your heart rate's just high the entire time, it's, man, it's more manageable on kind of like the muscular level, so that may be a, a worth practicing. I remember like last summer we had, it was a series of back-to-back -back workouts, and it ended with a three-minute AMRAP of wall balls, and they were heavy to 10 feet for women as well. And I was so blown up and I was doing threes and I thought I did <laughs> terrible and I ended up like getting them almost the most wall yeah. balls just doing threes. Yeah. Um, so. The heavy wall balls at Granite Games to the 10 foot target, they did some damage to females. <laughs> that <they> did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even the guys were just, some of them looked awful. So it definitely is something worth practicing. We need to get some see through targets. Yeah, I know. Cause it's hard. I know. I, do you excuses. Know? I email John. <laughs> <laughs> I really do know. All right, so he should be finishing up this set pretty soon. Let's see if I can see what Cena's mouthing. Oh, she's counting so, silently. Yeah. <laughs> Dinner head. Cena? Oh, no, I saw something there. She nope, said we something. Still got more. <laughs> yes, you know, I, thought he said, I thought she just said 40. That could have been. No, I just want to point out that Kyle oh, and I are back there uh, prepping for Murph as this was a couple weeks ago. Mm. We crushed it, no did, big deal. Did you? Did he beat you? <laughs> Ask him. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> but he did great. He did, he crushed it. <laughs> Should we spend a couple minutes talking smack about Kyle in this throw down? I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> All right, on to the double unders. All right, so last set, let's see how you long You can tell he's, he's pretty blown up because usually he transitions fast to double unders. This is, I, to me, I would go for something like this. I know it's the last 120. I'm just gonna go until I trip or I feel like I'm going to fail and then that's when I would take a break if, if I needed to. I wouldn't try to have planned breaks, but I know some people like the planned breaks even with one set left. So he just opened with 20 there. I don't know if that was 20 in a miss or 20 planned. It's hard to tell because he stops the rope with his yeah, feet when, he he, when he's actually stopping. Yeah. Well, that, that looked one, like a miss. That was definitely a miss yeah. and he also <laughs> shook his head. So I'm guessing that he doesn't think that this was his best execution of the workout, and but his effort was great. Yeah, this is a character building workout. When you get into this situation, <laughs> you're just getting it's kicked in the face you, by CrossFit. And there's a camera. Yeah, and, yeah. and you, you know, know people are going to people watch. are going to talk about it yeah. as you're going. Well, it looks so simple on paper, but these are the ones that are very challenging. 
Yeah, he is hurting. I feel you, man. Jordan, I do feel you. <laughs> I do feel you. This is why I've quit CrossFit 88 times. <laughs> Every time you go to the back. gym. And I'm getting brought back for episode number 100, which is Let's next week. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm not. Yeah. No, I'm not. I, is, I mean, the bounding still looks pretty good. It's the same yeah. as when he started. His hand action still looks pretty solid as well. His shoulders, like, he just must be overall pretty blown up because he seems to still have, you know, he's still within that zone of where your hands need to be in. His arm action's pretty good. His jump height's pretty good. So he's just missing, and, you know, his rest, he's going down to his knees. So I think he's just tired. Tired, tired, tired. Yeah, it's <laughs> tough at the end of the workout to finish strong on double unders. It's like he's picking up his speed a little yeah, bit now. Yeah, it does look good. A little bit of sprint finish motivation. That face right there. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Just get it done. Good and job, man. we're That's done. It. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Good, hard to tell. Good job, Jordan. All right, Jordan, thank you for putting yourself through that suffering for us to the whiteboard. All right, so the workout, I think the strategy for this one is definitely very dependent upon athletic level. Elites are obviously going to get through the muscle ups a lot more efficiently than both RX and intermediate. So that kind of changes the context of how you're gonna approach the workout. So I'd recommend for the muscle ups, one to three sets in round one. So I think males will probably do the first set unbroken. I think if I were giving Travis, for example, who's really competent in wall balls, muscle ups, and double unders a strategy, I would probably say unbroken muscle ups in the first set, and then in the second set, maybe break it into eight, seven, or five, five, five. And then as he's moving into the wall balls, I think somebody who's super confident with wall balls would probably go unbroken in set one and maybe two to three sets in, in uh, round two. So 20, 20, 20, or 30, 30 would be a good break strategy for the wall balls and then a plan for unbroken double unders. Obviously that can be the plan like we watched in the demo. Jordan was planning on going unbroken in the double unders, but there's definitely some bodily interference in your shoulders and your coordination when you pair muscle ups and wall balls with double unders. So elite strategy, that would probably be how I would break it down. I think uh, bigger end of the set ranges for females or for people that aren't good at muscle ups, same thing with wall, wall balls, bigger sets or bigger number of breaks for for wall balls if you're less skilled at that. Maybe if you're a smaller athlete and you're less confident with doing big unbroken sets of wall balls, break it up a little bit more than this. As we talked about in the demo video as well, I think just be cognizant of your break times. Doing a set of 20 and then resting for 20 or 30 seconds is definitely not as time saving as doing a set of 10, resting five seconds and just trying to keep moving and keep those rest breaks really short. For RX athletes, RX athletes can definitely vary in terms of how well they execute this workout based on just having one or two really good skills within the three movements that we're doing in the workout. So I put here three to seven sets as kind of a reference range. Jordan, I think, did two sets and three or four sets in the second one. But I think if you went five, five, five as an example, that would be a really good break strategy for an RX athlete. I think you could also do this as three and then two, 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 two to finish and break it up into seven sets and actually still go through the workout in a relative competitive time because it is 30 muscle ups in a relatively short window and you need to be mindful of the fact that those second 15 muscle ups are under a lot of fatigue. So be prepared for, for a lot smaller sets than what you saw Jordan do or what you would see an elite athlete do in that type of a workout. For the wall balls, I think for an RX athlete, their skill level with a wall ball should be relatively close to elite. So the same style of break, one to two sets, two to three sets would kind of be a target for an elite level performance and then break that up more as needed. So if you need to do six sets of 10, feel free to do that. But if I were telling you to take an aggressive strategy in a qualifier style setting, I would recommend trying to push the pace there, especially if you're taking a lot of breaks and muscle ups because you're gonna be losing time relative to the elite on that component of the workout. For double unders, I'd say for people that are really high skill RX athletes, aim for unbroken. If not, maybe three sets. So something like 
40, 40, 40 gets you through 120 relatively quick. If you do end up breaking, if it's by accident, I'd just consider that a planned break. Take your breath and then jump back into it. If you're confident to make sure that you can hit them all unbroken, 40, 40, 40, or something along those lines to just make sure that you get through that in less sets so that, or sorry, in as fast of a time as possible without blowing yourself up going back into that second set of muscle ups and then be as aggressive as possible on the last set of double unders because you're done right after you finish that. For intermediate athletes, this workout is definitely a lot different because there's two potential movements that could be too high skill for you. So the first way to attack muscle ups is first you can just scale the reps or change the movement as needed. Talked about it in a previous throwdown, something like a burpee box jump could be a potential alternative. You could do strict pull-ups and strict ring dips and give yourself some sort of upper body stimulus. You could do jumping muscle ups where you jump into the reps and use the momentum of your lower body to carry you through the reps so that way they're still high power and you're getting something similar. Or if you can do muscle ups, but you know that 30 is just gonna time cap you, you could just scale the number of reps down. You also have the opportunity to just go through the workout as written, but if your muscle ups are a huge bottleneck, know that that 15 will probably push you through the time cap and then you're not really getting the same type of stimulus going through the workout. So be mindful of that to change it. For the wall ball, I think same as RX and same as elite athletes, maybe you could scale the reps if you want to, but I think it's good to get used to doing that type of volume. A wall ball is a relatively low, low complexity skill that should be an easier thing for an intermediate athlete to pick up versus a muscle up and a double under. So that's kind of an opportunity for you to compare yourself against the best while getting some sort of a stimulus that's similar in the workout. And then finally for double unders, if you can do them but you can't do them well, maybe lower the reps or do a one, one, two drill. So single under, single under, double under and count that as three reps when you go through. So it's still three jumps that you're doing. I think that could be a way for you to go through the workout, get some bounding and still allow yourself to go through the workout without just getting jammed up by not having the skill. You could also change these to speed steps. You could do heavy single unders or less reps. All of those work for intermediate athletes. I think that's it for elites, RX, and intermediate athletes. Good luck. I'll see you next week with episode 100 of The Throwdown. Give them a round, guys. Blah. I'm going to take one. <laughs> Keep it going. Max O'Hodge. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. It's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Patar in this thing, man. Hey, look, man. Thank y'all for watching Train Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button. You know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel. You know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known what it be known what it be known. You know what I'm saying? Patar.